How you doing, my friend? Nice to meet yeah. you. Cool. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, my friend. I'm uh, on the shores out here. The little only light I have on me is Lake Ontario. I'm on the shores of New York State facing Canada. Yes, yes. Probably a little colder up there than it is over here in California. And you're in L.A., my friend? Yes, I am. Very nice. Cool. Right you on. know, uh, in Rochester, the mighty Rochester Philharmonic awesome. will be put, playing exactly what's on that page. And I might say with panache, there'll be like one rehearsal in the afternoon. They will nail it and deliver a show that night. The cool thing is that since they are also observant of the page, that is their ethos, uh, is to deliver what's on the page exactly. Um, yeah. That means that I can fuck up, <laughs> screw around, go on tangents, have an adventure, come back. I'll meet you at, you know, I'll meet you at the bar, you know, the double bar line. Um, sure. And uh, because I know exactly where they'll be, I can fly. Sure. And um, I've also taken more liberties with the material than an orchestrator normally would, because I'm in the band, I can do that. Um, and so I, my, my arrangements, my derangements are a lot more uh, adventurous, shall we say. I push it way out there. I mean, so you get your choruses that you like, you know, you get to hear your Roxanne and your message in a bottle, but I probably took more liberties than a hired gun would have. Well, listening to Marley when I was in college at, you know, UC Berkeley, uh, mm -hmm. uh, not Berkeley School of Music, UC University of California at Berkeley. Um, and I heard that and I thought that rhythm is cool. Uh, and I actually listened closely. Fuck, he's putting the backbeat at the same place as the snare and there is no one. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was a breakthrough right there. Uh, but it wasn't until uh, years later, 77 going into 78, New Year's Eve party over at Stingo's place. I lent him my uh, monstrous uh, uh, sound system. Uh, and amongst that was a record collection, including uh, Toots and the Maytals and um, Bob Marley. January 1, 1978, Stingo had a completely different music uh, vibe. He was completely uh, inspired by it. No, I mean, he has other in influences as well, but the first flush of reggae was profound. The Beatles were a little alert before us with ska, oobla di, oobla da. We have to give it up for oh. the Beatles every fucking time. If it ain't the Beatles, we got to give it up for it's Pink fucking Floyd. Everything that I thought, you know, whenever we think we invented something, eh, check your Floyd. They probably, you know... You know, the, the 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 guitar delay giving you the 16th notes when you play uh, eighth notes of uh, the dotted eighth note uh, delay. And, you know, I thought we invented it between Andy and I. We discovered that one afternoon. Uh, there's a Pink Floyd album that predates us where they did it. OK, now, Jimi Hendrix, total influence. I owe it all to Jimi Hendrix and Mitch Mitchell. <clears throat> um, that's another story. That's uh, when I was a kid raised on jazz wrong jazz admittedly mm -hmm. big white big band jazz what my dad wanted me to do mm -hmm. and my mother was listening to Stravinsky and 20th century orchestral composers um and uh, that was my music world until Jimi Hendrix and that's when it all started happening right so Jimi Hendrix we fully give it up for Jimi right. and Mitch by the time we played with Black Uhuru we already had our sound love those guys great band not any kind of influence on the police. Yeah, hell yeah. And, and then, a great band, love them. You know, uh, apart from just, you know, seeing them on stage, they were so cool. Um, but by then we were already doing what we were doing. As far as trios out today, who, who do you like? If you're at a festival, I know the most, like I said, it's the police in the 80s. The, the big trio the for me is Rage Against the Machine. I don't care who they got in the front, Tim, Tom, and Brad, that is a fucking great band. I don't yeah. care what's going on at the front of the stage. Yeah. It could be rap. It could be Zach. It could be anybody. Oh, yeah. Those three guys, that is a band. I'm not that wild about jazz, but I love a jazz audience. Sure. I love, you know, the fact that they love to hear your fingers wiggling and they want to hear every noodle you've got. Fuck the singer. Fuck the song. Let me hear you play. <laughs> I love jazz audience. Now, oh, yeah. they're abused by their jazz musicians who play bullshit to them. 
but I love the audience anyway. And with jam bands, the jam audience is the same thing. They want to hear something spontaneous that's never been played or heard before, will never be played or heard again. They want it here now, make it up on the spot. We don't care if you have some dead spots, just keep it coming. And exactly. those are beautiful people. Love exactly. to love to go out there. You know, for Oysterhead, for a two hour show, we'll rehearse for maybe half an hour. Well, there are advantages of a set list, um, such as the guitarist knows which, the, the, the roadie knows which guitar you need. Uh, the lighting guy has some clue what's going to happen. But with Fish and Oysterhead, which uses the Fish crew mm -hmm. and TOEF on lights, Christopher, uh, they're all hip to that and they all swing with that. And Trey Anastasio only uses one guitar for a show anyway. Um, sure, 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 sure. And uh, so I think he has a set list now. But Fish, I, I, I don't. He has, he has a Hammond organ cabinet with 500 songs on him all with complex meters, um, strange breaks. Uh, and they can, he can call out a song they haven't played in 10 years and they'll nail it. I'm only human, right? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a, I try to be righteous. I try and be humble, but I am only human. So on the subject of Sting, Shaggy, and Sinatra, um, they didn't get a Grammy for that, but I did. <laughs> the drag is that I was all trying to enjoy my schadenfreude except that I can't because since Sting didn't win, I can't brag to him about my win. You know, I can't bring it up. You know, I have to like avoid the subject. Hey dude, I just won another Grammy. God damn it. Uh, and, uh, but I, you know, if he had won, we could have a laugh together about it. But since he didn't win, I get no brag. Yeah. 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 Um, we can talk about bass drum pedals all you like. And, and by the way, you think I'm joking about the bass drum pedal. It is the most important invention in music of the 20th and 21st centuries. And I got a store bought, Tama. <clears throat> okay, wow. I didn't buy it in a store, but all my all my Tama gear is regulation standard issue stuff. And in fact, I don't even play my own drums when I go play shows. In Rochester, I will not be playing my drums. I'll right. be playing a Tama drum set that is exactly like mine that is available in any store. I just bang shit. I'm not that precious about what shit I bang. By the way, you're, you're, you're going to plug the show in Rochester, right? By, 100%. Know, just... 100%. Okay, I'll leave that to you. Okay, the diaries. Well, that was the story of our early dates is we'd show up in Syracuse in the Support Act, who are only supporting because they're local, and we're all the way from England, which made us the headliners. Nobody had heard of us either. In fact, people probably knew the Support Act better than they knew some English band, but we were from London, which made right. us cool. And right. we would get there, and we'd have my you know, tiny drum set, and like two amps and the support act would have lights and keyboards and dancing girls and, and uh, everything going on. And then uh, when they've done their thing, clear the stage and there's two amps and a drum set for the headliner. Uh, I think my favorite is uh, arena stadiums are cool, but the state, the, the, the stage is too far away from the dressing rooms. You got to get in a golf cart just to get on stage. Um, the sound is a little drier. The arena is the perfect balance. I mean, uh, the sound in those rooms is great. It's a big enough audience, so it feels important. The sound on stage is generally really good. <clears throat> clubs, uh, I don't do clubs so much because the showers suck. Um, <laughs> and uh, theaters are fine. I'll, I'll, I like playing theaters. Speaking of theaters, I'll see you at Kodak Hall on, on March 17th with the Philharmonic. I'm looking forward. It should be pretty killer. Excellent. Look forward to that. See you there. All right, my man. Take care. Pleasure, Stuart. Sure thing. Bye now. Right. Take care.